on digital, online and on 104.6 FM. 104.6 FM. BBC Radio Bristol, the place to be for Bathonians. Drive with Ben Prater. 12 minutes past five. Bingo balls, the last of the week from the Bath Coffee Festival. I got on the train down to Bath, down to the wreck today to look at the marquee going up. Great excitement, great buzz down there. Jez, a musician, Mike, a coffee buyer who travels the world, and Jez's mate Gary, they'll be on the balls later on. It's a nice marriage, isn't it? A bit of music, a bit of coffee, well, people absolutely. chilling out. Presumably the papers will be around, you know. And you know, Mike was talking about the culture of different coffees, and uh, in a way, Wood's a bit like this, that there's um, something like over 15,000 wood species on this planet, and only a fraction of those have been classified, and a fraction of those are actually used. And if you ask, kind of, the average person to recognise woods. Maybe they'd recognise oak, um, pine. Cherry. Cherry, yeah, well, I'm exhibiting a, one of my tables in cherry. But I think it, it's real education. Unless you really inform people, they can't really appreciate it. Mm. And Because you talk about instant coffee, and, you know, that's the bottom line, isn't it? You make yeah. a cup of instant coffee. Mine are some wonderful instant coffees, aren't they? I'm quite I was amazed. Say, it does a job. It does a job. It it's does. like MDF does a job, you know. MDF? <laughs> yeah. Well, did you have to yeah. lower the tone <laughs> of the conversation? <laughs> I'm all for MDF. He was going to talk about instant coffee in that way. Yeah, we'll have some fun. I forgot to say, not only is Jez a musician, and we'll hear one of his tracks later, uh, but he's a fantastic woodworker as well, which probably explains all the talk of Cherry and MDF. On digital, online, and on 104.6 FM. 104.6 FM. BBC Radio Bristol, the place to be for Bathonians. Drive with Ben Prater. It's slightly ironic that I've arrived at the Bath Coffee Festival and there's not a smell of coffee in the air, Jez. There's no... There's no uh, terrible, isn't it? ...in the background. None of the machines are yet working, but they have got the whole of today to sort out, I suppose. But if anyone is brewing, we're over here on our very nice plump cushions. How are you, Jez? All right? Yeah, I'm great. I'm uh, My taste buds are, uh, you know, going great guns. Now, first of all, I've sent your YouTube clip to my old man because my dad likes a bit of woodwork. And he, he loves the fact that you preach the, the virtues of the router. Oh, the router, yes. I, I actually wrote the first book on it called The Incredible Router back in 1989. At that time, it was just referred to as a grooving tool. But I claimed, and I think I demonstrated, that it's the most versatile tool in the world. And a whole multi-million industry has now grown up. And, of course, poor old me has to busk in Bath and scrape a living with my guitar. Speak to the likes of me, you know. Yes. Chuck me your CD to play tonight, that kind of thing. Oh, and well, well, that would... You should be flogging be the Incredible Router volume 23 by now shouldn't you well i've done it on um, dvd and also i've done a kind of bespoke revised edition as well um presumably not a good idea to have six coffees before you uh, use the router though is it you know you're gonna have a steady hand haven't you with that bit of kit well i don't know actually because i i must admit i do use coffee quite a lot to keep the old brain matter going but i, I never know i mean it is a stimulant isn't it so um let's bring mike in he's up from taylor's the coffee people up here uh, in harrogate isn't it yeah that's that's the one and we're down here to um, to share in the delights of coffee because um, it is an amazingly complex commodity I think uh, in the UK do you know this this breaks my heart but still about 80% of all the coffee that we drink is instant coffee and 20% being roast and ground actually 10 years ago that would have been more like 90% isn't it? and so it's changing but what I really want people to do if they come to this festival is to experiment with coffee do a bit of tasting because when you taste specialty coffees it can be it's varied as wine, you know, it can be really, there are some amazing, you know, if you, for example, taste a coffee from Kenya, you get these lovely lemony citrus notes, honeyed flavours coming through. Compare that to something, uh, let's say an Indonesian, a Java or a Sumatra, where you have really heavy chocolatey coffees and totally different, as varied as wine, so, yeah. yeah. We're at one end of this huge marquee as they set up all their different stores. I saw Martin Blue Noster Chef getting ready for his exhibition space in the middle. Is it as stuffy as wine festivals can be? I mean, I know everything's becoming a bit more for the common people, but is coffee still, you know, should people be a bit wary when they come uh, along? I don't, I don't think so at all, to be quite honest. I think that coffee, everybody drinks coffee anyway. Okay, you get posh coffee that I was just talking about, these top-notch coffees, um, 
but you know, if you compared a top-notch coffee with a, a, a top-notch wine, I mean, wines, you can spend hundreds of pounds, thousands of pounds, I think, in some cases, for a bottle of, you know, ridiculously posh wine. With great coffees, you know, it's never going to be, you might be paying twice as much. So, no, I think coffee's really accessible. And, you know, there's, and I think here at the festival, we're going to see some of the baristas, the people who make great coffees, the, you know, making espressos and lattes and cappuccinos and things. I think coffee's really, really approachable. But I think the, another thing is the coffee really helps Mike with his harmonica playing. Have you heard him? No. Well, listen to this space tomorrow on Saturday. Are you, you going to be getting that out as well, yeah, are you? Well, well, you know, I was just talking to Jez and I said, you don't need blues, and I play a bit of blues harmonica, and he said, well, you know, we're going to do a bit some coffee things together. Let's do some music as well. So it's I'd not in your pocket. To, is it in your it pocket? Is in my oh, pocket. come on, Mike. Oh, come on. on. This is, a, what an added bonus this uh, is. Ten-second blast That's all I need. Yeah, that's all I okay. need. Come on, chaps! Come on! Yeah. The uh, guy, Jez, you're a you're a big skeptic. Well, sorry, actually, introduce your friend. Yeah, well, so rude, aren't I? On a little you, you really are. Yes, but if I can introduce um, Gary here, um, Gary Milhouse, um, who's um, playing classical guitar tomorrow here at the um, festival. At with the you. festival, uh, well, he's playing separately, and then I'm playing Latin gypsy jazz guitar. And how far do you go back then, Gary? Do you like him, or are you just sort of come in to talk, you know, to me? Oh no, with no, him? I've known Jeremy for a while now. And we've become close friends. We met on the busking scene. Uh, I was playing, he was playing his guitar and I was really into music. And, and we finally got together because I smashed my guitar up and asked Jeremy to uh, repair it. And because uh, he's great at woodwork, he repaired my classical guitar, which is great. Uh, it's a rage, a peak of rage, or? Oh, no, no, no. I, actually, I, I tripped over something, fell on it. <laughs> so, uh, so it's, not quite, drunk, it's not quite rock and roll. No, no, not quite. the hotel window. No, 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 not that stage. <laughs> Gents, right. um, the feature is called Ben's Bristol Bingo Balls, but of course we include Bath in that as well, so we drop the Bristol. Pull out one of those, please. It's anything. It just it, We find out about you guys, really. You're all passionate. Uh -huh, there you uh -huh. go, Gary. Pull out one of those. It's like the FA Cup draw. Yeah. 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 Leeds United will play. I'm hoping for good things. Dude, what have you got then, Jez? I've got uh, retirement, 65. Something well, I hope said. I'll never, ever reach. We'll be lucky if you're retiring at 65. It's going to yeah, be 85, isn't it, at this yeah. rate? There's no money to pay for us all. 65... Here's, here's a, here's a about cerebral more. one. Yeah. Why are we here, Jez? Why are we here? That's Why are a we very, here? very good question. As we I've sit on our comfy cushions. We're here because I've made this really fantastic table for the <laughs> Bath <laughs> Coffee Festival. Not in this marquee. Yeah. More generally, on right. the face oh. of the earth. Oh. Why? Yeah, what's it all about? Just to clutter the planet up and leave a bit of mess for future politicians to try and sort out? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'd say that answer, to be quite honest with you. No one comes up with anything too weighty. And what have you got, Gary? Oh, uh, number 26. It's your favourite holiday destination? Oh, my... Where's your act? Where are you from? Me, London originally, Hackney. I was born in East End of London. It's all very fashionable down there now. They're, they're, cool. they're all drinking their, uh, you know, bijou coffees, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I went back not long ago, and you're right, it has really gone up market. I mean, my granddad had a pub uh, in the East End of London. Uh, he used to own a Royal Oak, and he had a flower market every Sunday. And uh, it used to be, like, the real East End guys used to be down there and used to buy the stuff and flowers and go go into the pubs and that but went down there not long ago and um it's really gone trendy and where would you go for a week presumably that's a bit too long in hackney as delightful as it now is <laughs> no, yeah. where would you where would you love to go money no object money no object i'd love to go to brazil passion of music and yeah. and and coffees and food you've got to learn the chords to the girl from the oh, yeah. Yeah. It would be great to have a, a cafe culture, a cafe coffee culture, after five o'clock in Bath, because I'm not a great pub uh, beer drinker, and I often think, God, where can I get a cup of coffee, you know, after hours, you know, after the shops are closed. It would be great if coffee moved in that direction, that we had more of a cafe culture, which could include music, of course, <laughs> in the evenings. And you're available, presumably. Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> we'll supply the coffee. Yeah, yeah, I saw, we'll do I saw where that one was going. <laughs> it's been lovely. Thank you. Have a good festival. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, really, really nice chat we had today on our plump. Uh,